Welcome to RPV City Talk. RPV City Talk is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes to inform the community on recent city matters. RPV City Talk is a weekly show that features the RPV Mayor, City Council, or City Employees. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to RPV City Talk. It's great to have here in studio the Mayor of RPV, Mayor Jim Knight. Always my pleasure. Thank here we you. go again. It's great to have you here. <laughs> just in time for summer and to update us on everything going on in the city. How are you doing? Very fine, <laughs> yeah. It's been turning out to be a great summer. Starting off to be a good summer. We love to hear that. Busy, busy. Um, I just want to open up by starting that um, we had a, a big announcement um, at, at the city, and that is our deputy city manager, Carolyn Petru, after 29 years of serving here in the city in many different roles as deputy, as interim last year city manager, mm -hmm. she is going to step down at the end of the summer. That's so right. what were your thoughts on that? I was well. I was sad to hear it. I understand she's been with the city for almost three decades here. Right. So she, but uh, she is uh, she is a city in many respects. I mean, she she grew up on the hill. She loves the city. She's been almost in every department we have in the in the uh, the city functioning, and um, uh, she has a fantastic institutional knowledge. But she's always been a consummate professional in how she handled mm -hmm. everything in terms of interfacing with the public or with the staff, coordinating the staff. Of course, she was. Uh, interim city manager last year, and she did a fabulous job. So I'm going to greatly miss her. She is. It had to uh, happen at some point, right? It probably <laughs> had to happen at some point, yeah. She's earned her time but to, she is, to take a break. She's been uh, such a great asset to the city over those years. Yeah, and so now what's the process um, in replacing her? Of course, we just brought our new city manager on board in March, so. Right. It's uh, That position is up to the city manager. Um, uh, he could either replace the position or not have the position. That's his choice. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. Okay, I do want to say thank you to Carolyn Petrie. Oh, my She's goodness, yes. She's just been uh, an incredible fantastic. leader. fantastic. Yeah, well, I want to give her great thanks. So. Okay, um, another big item, of course, City Council, you've just passed the balanced budget for 2015-16. That must feel good. <laughs> yes, we did, and, of course, we got a balanced budget again. And um, it, it's always um, a challenge for us because uh, the greatest portion of our uh, revenue is from property taxes, but we only get six cents out of every dollar. And that's almost half of what a lot of other cities get. So we really do give the residents a good bang for the buck yes. because we have well-maintained infrastructure. We provide good services, a lot of parks for the, for the residents. So, uh, but we, we really have to uh, scrutinize that budget to really make it come out at the end so it's balanced. The city is in very good shape financially with a big, a nice healthy reserve. Right. We have a reserve and we also have other funds too. We have uh, restricted funds we have uh, for other kinds of projects and we also have a capital improvement plan which also has a reserve. So, uh, but we do have a lot of challenges on our infrastructure uh, coming down the road. We're going to have to take care of things. So, um, uh, but I think we will will utilize those tax dollars very efficiently. And of course, one of the big increases we saw in this year's budget had to do with crime prevention. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, talk about why you've targeted that area as a place to increase services with the Sheriff's Department and what, the, what taxpayers can expect to get for the added expense now in the budget. Right. Well, um, we, uh, there's been, a, a, not just our city, but in, in a lot of cities, there's been a little bit of uptick in some of the burglaries and those kind of things. Um, part of the problem is we have realignment, but we also have another, I think it's Prop 47, where they reduce the, um, the sentencing for certain offenses, like drugs and so on. And that's caused um, some people not to be able to get into rehab, which makes them desperate for money. Mm -hmm. And so there's certain things that happen that way. Um, so what we've done, we've, we've added two additional patrol cars with the sheriff. That's strictly dedicated to Rancho Palos Verdes. And that's the first time really there's been a car dedicated to the city, correct? Because right. right now we're in a contract, we share resources with right. the peninsula. Right. So that's... Yes, we, we have an arrangement with, with other cities uh, where we share the resources. Uh, the, the deputies are supposed to spend their time relative to the amount we pay, which is a larger, we're the larger city, so we pay the larger amount, but we have more territory to cover too. Mm -hmm. So this will be dedicated strictly to RPV residents. Um, we're trying to, um, it's not so much part of the budget, uh, but we're trying to increase the volunteer patrols uh, out there. We've also in the budget allocated money for a um, uh, automatic license plate recognition system uh, to, to be put in the patrol cars and uh, possibly one spot down here at La Rotunda on the road so we can um, monitor people coming and going in the city. 
it'll all be in a public area. It's not going to private affect any private property, anything like that. So right. we just want to make sure we provide as much safety to the residents as we can. Well, you, you know, we've been hearing about this for a long time now with the, the community more concerned. And like we talked about the perception that people aren't feeling mm -hmm. safer. So this should, um, you think this should help make people I would hope it make, feel safer? I hope it make them feel safer. But the bottom line is uh, uh, to, to action, to make sure that, that we are administering action to, to, to do that. Uh, there's the perception part of it also. Uh, we also are going to work very closely with the sheriff's department to make sure to find out what is working, what isn't working, what you know, and just constantly fine tune it to make sure we are doing the best we can. So the increase with the two more patrol, the money is going to that. It's just one year because you're going to reevaluate that right after a year and see if this is or yes, we're going to reevaluate it. Um, we we have to see what we're going to be doing down the road in terms of what how that has affected uh, our effectiveness and, and safety of the community, and uh, we'll reevaluate it. Down the road. Right, because yes. I know they were talking about having a, another, uh, a third position higher, using money to do that with this, like a special assignment person yeah, we in the sheriff's department. We discussed the investigative uh, team uh, concept, but uh, in, in asking the sheriff about that, uh, if we were to buy an additional, or buy, to, to hire an additional um, uh, investigative team member, they wouldn't necessarily be dedicated to RPV right. because they work as a team. There's a larger team that actually works in coordination with some other communities, and, and it's, a, it's a large investigative team. So we so decided that might not be the best. When will we expect to see those two cars patrolling in RPV? Do you have any idea of the timeline? I don't know exactly the timeline, but it should be very soon because we approved the budget. It's, it's in there. It's allocated, and so it should be very soon. Right. And then I know we've talked about this numerous times on the show that you as mayor, you've been very committed to saying you want to work with all the neighborhood groups and talk to them because... You know, every every area of RPD has different issues going on with that uptick in burglary or mm -hmm. not, and just to kind of hear. And so, are you getting more feedback on this matter? Do you feel when you're out and talking to people in the community? Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, like a lot of things, we hear the complaints, but when things are working, sometimes it gets quiet. Okay, well, <laughs> no news is good <laughs> no, news. No, no, but that, that's fine. I understand that. And yes, we, we uh, the sheriff and I um, both. Uh, and, and the other council members as well want to get out in the community and make sure we communicate what we're doing for, for them. And also, I've got a sheet that I bring that uh, was put together by uh, um, the um, law enforcement committee. Uh, uh, Susan Brooks is on that, and Anthony Misitich, and uh, the sheriff. It's a tips for homeowners of what, what to do to reduce your risk of being at risk for, for any mm -hmm. kind of crime. All right, don't make yourself a target. And yeah. join your neighborhood watch group. We always That's say that. That's always good, it absolutely. really, really helps. It's amazing we have stories coming in about somebody who happened to see a car that didn't seem right, and they happened to write down the license plate number, and, and sure enough, something happened. They shared it with the sheriff, mm -hmm. and bam, that person got caught. And as we wrap up our budget talk, um, more money for the sheriff's department. Um, obviously, money that it will be going towards infrastructure projects. That's where most things are right. going to. What, anything coming up that you want the community to be aware of? Some really important projects that the well, city is going to focus on after San Ramon is right, come and gone now. Right. Well, we're continuing with our street maintenance uh, program, which puts our streets at a, a very high level of, uh, of service uh, for our residents. Um, and uh, again, infrastructure, we do have the storm drains we have to deal with. Um, that, that will be taking quite a bit. And um, we're looking at uh, trying to figure out a way to reutilize uh, the Terra Linda Center and mm -hmm. maybe uh, do some improvements down there. So we have quite a few infrastructure projects in, in, in the uh, lined up to be done. It's just a matter of setting the priorities. The safety issues are first. Um, storm drains are extremely important. Okay, and that brings us to the next question I had. Um, at your last council meeting, the council voted to increase the storm day drain user fee by 10 cents. 10 cents a year. And uh, mm -hmm. there was some conversation about that amount also to talk about what the council discussed uh, regarding this agenda item and also give us some more background on what's going on with the, um, the fee, the okay. storm drain user fee. Well, it's, as, as you know, it's sunsetting here in the next year. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, we are in the process of trying to put together a... Um, a ballot initiative for the residents to decide whether, whether or not they want to continue it down the road. Um, and we want to make sure that they have the information they need to make an intelligent decision. Um, <clears throat> but the current storm drain user fee, yes, there was a, uh, there's, um, it's, it's, it was set out by the voters as to how much they can be increased every year. 
we have an oversight committee that looks and sees to make sure the funding is spent correctly. And the oversight committee had a 3-2 vote in favor of increasing the fee. Uh, there were a couple of committee members that were not in favor of increasing the fee. I think they thought it was just 10 cents. And, it isn't yeah, that much, but well, it's something. Yeah, and we had one council member that didn't want to increase it either. Um, but uh, basically it was 10 cents uh, for the year. So uh, we, we, all that money is well spent. Um, we, we inherited an infrastructure system from the county with uh, what they call CMP storm drain pipes. It's a corrugated metal pipe. It's a pipe that has that little ridge that goes like this. Mm -hmm. Well, when the pipes are in the ground and those ridges catch soil and they catch water and they rust out because they're very thin metal. They rust out very quickly. And these, some of these storm drains are 40, 50, 60 years old. And so what happens when the bottom rusts out, um, when the storms come, they no longer are being, the water's no longer being channeled to the pipe. It's, it's, it's cutting a, a ridge below the pipe. As what happened in uh, Western Avenue, nice. we had a sinkhole. Well, that sinkhole is caused exactly for that reason. And so some of, these, some of these storm drains run under people's homes. So we're really, we, were, we are trying our best to take uh, our infrastructure funding and, and what we have available to fix these things so we don't have a problem down the road. It's a really important uh, aspect of our infrastructure projects. And storm drain user fee helps to get some of that project. There's still projects that need to be because done. Because it gives you a designated fund rather than going out of the general fund to do this. Yes, right. designated for that, that sole purpose. And we have an oversight committee to make sure it's spent correctly. So, But that particular program was a 10-year program that's running out in 2016. So as I said, I, we, we want to provide the voters an opportunity to choose whether they want to go forward with it or not. And Obviously, you sound like you would consume, support saying this that it's needed. Personally, I think it's, it's an extremely important uh, um, part of our infrastructure. Uh, like I say, um, this is how sinkholes are created, and uh, it may not be under a road someday. It may be under a home. So right. I, 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 I want to make sure we have all this in place. Now, at this point, a good way to for the community to want to learn more, you can go right onto the city website. We always pitch that here on the show because it's an invaluable resource there. You can, and there will be information about. Well, the website has a lot of information, uh, and, the, and you, there's a there's information about the storm drain user fee and um, uh, the current one, and um, and the committee meetings and their minute and what they talk about and so on. And um, so yeah, there's 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 plenty of information. So about log that. on to rpvca.gov. Right. All right. Uh, moving on to uh, other issues that have come up that have. Um, that have uh, sparked some debate, I might say, is uh, mm -hmm. what's going on at Del Cerro with the parking issue. And um, you, uh, the council, all met and uh, seemed to try to resolve that. There's a problem with parking, and we've become so popular here. Too, you see, it's not easy being popular. <laughs> yes. <Mayors. laughs> well, the beautiful natural attributes of the city have been discovered by uh, millions of people in the L.A. Basin and beyond. People come from even different, or further beyond that. And there's just one street where there's parking to enter into the preserve uh, on Crenshaw. I mean, there's other entry points in the preserve, but this... We're not going to tell anybody where they are. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But this is, the main, this is the main one. This is the main entry point there at Burma, at the top of Burma Road. And so um, over time, since we've been discovered, um, there's been parking issues there. They, they not only park way down Crenshaw, even on, around on Crest. I've seen pictures of people parked down Crest. But they begin to park in the neighborhoods, and um, so the residents are getting aced out of their own uh, parking in the area. So, the especially the Del Cerro Homeowners Association, but there's another one, is uh, Valley Vista and Island yeah. View, right. uh, are also part of this. Del Cerro was took, kind of took the lead on this one, and uh, I had talked to them a long time ago, and I finally agendized this to be on the council uh, agenda, <coughs> so we can talk about a parking permit program. So the parking would be limited just to the residents there. There'll be signage, there'll be uh, 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 parking permit stickers or something they'll have for their cars. And so then the, they will not be impacted by the people accessing the, the preserve. And in addition to that, uh, there's been some safety issues in Long Crenshaw because people are now parking on both sides of there. The road's not that wide. And I, I've driven by that myself where someone has their door open talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. and. You, you try to go around them this way to to avoid them, and there's a car coming your direction. So, we've eliminated parking on the um, I guess you call it the east side uh, of there on Crenshaw. It'll be red striped. It'll be red striped where all the bushes are. 
the park where there's the sidewalk that's toward the ocean side will still have the parallel parking. There. I know there was talked about doing, you know, slanted parking. I'm not using the right words. Yeah, yeah, angled, yeah, parking. angled parking. Angled uh, parking. Uh, right. And but there was concern about safety with that if you went that approach. Well, yeah, there, there was um, the staff had a recommendation to go with a 60 degree angled parking with pay stations, so that we would, um, um, you know, have uh, more of a control of the number of cars that are there. Um, <clears throat> but that uh, seemed a little bit too extreme for the council and the residents there. So uh, the council decided to just keep the parallel parking, no pay stations, and red stripe one side, and we'll see how it goes. We got. We'll, we'll now have the um, restricted parking in the neighborhoods, and if people are happy, we'll continue along with that. If it gets uh, to the point where it still has some issues, we may have to go to angle parking at pay stations. We'll see. Well, it definitely seems the council's action to restrict parking and the measures you're putting into place uh, made the residents happy. They, um, they've never heard such a hearty applause <laughs> at the end of a vote at yeah. your council meeting, and they all applauded what you did because yeah. uh, you have to do that balance too. I mean, this is here for the public to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not a not in my backyard kind of situation. No, no, no. It is safety, and it is um, you know but, for but the neighborhood. But you know, the the residents are the taxpayers that maintain these parks, <clears throat> and I I am for one would like to make sure that they don't get aced out mm -hmm. of, the, of something that they are funding. And there was talk again about the resident RPV. There will be a like a public parks parking pass that's going to maybe come into play now, like that we can get as any resident that you will be able to park at parks? or is that Yeah, there's, we haven't quite worked out the details of it, but uh, some kind of pass if you're an RPB residence that you would be allowed to park in certain areas that would uh, have other, otherwise a strict, restricted parking. All right. Um, I know in my neighborhood of Seaview, for example, on where I live on PV Drive South, we have a permit. Okay, parking. all right. That's just for that our street. Just for your street, okay. Um, the, the, other, the other issue, the reason the staff had recommended more angle parking, because the current plan that the, uh, the council passed was just the restaurant on one side, reduces what originally was 84 uh, spaces down to uh, half of that, about 42 or so. Mm -hmm. And so what happens when you do that is it pushes our residents even further out to park because you have fewer spaces for, for there. So one of the reasons they had the recommendation of the pay station and the par uh, parking pass for RPU residents was that it would, it would give them, our, our people residents, more access to, to the entry to that, to that, that area. Um, <clears throat> but there were some issues with the angle parking. We, we weren't too sure about that, and the residents in Del Cerro didn't want to have that. So we, we're going to go along with what we have there now and, and look at it and reassess it down the road if we needed to add the other elements to it. Mm -hmm. And um, as we said, we've become so popular. I think uh, I've heard one of the council members refer to us as sort of becoming like LA's playground. We have beautiful parks here for mm -hmm. the you know, world to enjoy. And the park's master plan update is going to take, it goes before the council, right? On yeah. the 30th of June. June 30th, right. The June mm -hmm. 30th meeting. So what do you expect will come out of that? What, what, what's the goal? Well, the, a lot of those parks um, are the active parks. Uh, not, not. I mean, it, the preserve is kind of a separate item mm -hmm. to itself, and so Del, the Del Cerro issue had to do with the preserve itself. Correct. Um, but so, some aspects of uh, Del Cerro, uh, the uh, excuse me, the um, nature preserve will, will be included in that. But the parks master plan deals with a lot of the active parks and so on. Um, and what should be done with them, and, and like Ladera Linda is a big topic over there. What are we going to do with that, and are we going to upgrade that or not? So uh, there's quite Cabalini a bit to be covered. Cove is pretty much kind yeah, of yeah. Cabalini kind Cove of is. That one out. I mean, we, we it's included in the parks master plan, but it's it's, it's pretty much we've improved it down there. Uh, we are going to be adding pay stations down at Cabalini Cove. Okay. That will that will be in, that will be for this summer, and so that also um, is. Uh, something that we're trying to, because at times at Avalon Cove, the people will actually back up on PV Drive South waiting to get in and the parking lot's full. And so it becomes a, a traffic hazard in, in many respects. Um, and, and so we also have a, a senior pass for the Avalon Cove. If you're 62 or over, you can get in for free. Okay. But the Parks Master Plan update, the process had been going on for a while where the community was invited to meetings, mm -hmm. and so you must have been pleased with that, to get input, yeah, input from the was, residents. That's we want to, we want <laughs> to find me. out what, what do you want to do with these parks? What, what's your pleasure? You know, and, and we'll see what we can afford to do and what we can't, we can't do, but we want to make sure the residents have an input on a say as to what happens with their parks. So, yeah, we had a long series of workshops. We outreached there, and so that's finally come to conclusion, and 
June 30th, it'll be before the council. If there's any additional comments to come forward, they're welcome to either mm -hmm. write in or attend the meeting. Excellent, excellent. Well, we have lots of great parks, and it's going to get busier this summer, too, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Um, moving on, um, you know, one thing I'd put down about this whole idea of, you know, the fact through social media we've been discovered more and more. I mean, now because of it become so popular, this council has talked about, like, increasing film permit fees, things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. How do you, like, for you, like, how do you think we need to go about balancing that? Because, you know, on the one hand, you want to share your community, but mm -hmm. on the other hand, you want to make sure the quality of life of the residents doesn't get impacted either. Is that yeah, a, well, is that I mean, a challenge? it is a challenge. Um, I, I, I think I, I really am adamant about making sure our residents are, aren't getting aced out of, of, of enjoying right. their parks. And so uh, that's part of what we just talked about with the Del Cerro yeah. plan, uh, but also uh, other areas. If, um, if, if we have some kind of city pass or something where, where um, they have access mm -hmm. that, give, that would uh, you know, work for them, that would, that would be great. Maybe it could be a citywide thing. Um, but yeah, I, I want to make sure we, we, um, we want to make sure the, re the residents who are paying for these parks have access to them and not be uh, pushed out by, uh, by um, too, many, um, too much activity coming from a huge base in LA mm -hmm. Basin here. Yeah. Right. All right, moving on to other items that uh, you've been covering on the, at the council meetings in the last month or so. Edco came up our trash mm -hmm. hauler. You, the, com, the council basically approved a cost saving contract extension with Edco. Mm -hmm. So explain what's going on there, what the residents need to know about trash collection now in the city. Yes. Because it's been consolidated. Yes, it's been consolidated. We, we have, EDCO has, covers most of the city, but there are certain residential areas that Universal Waste System has been covering. Like yours, right? And Portuguese yeah. Bamboo, <laughs> that's correct. And um, uh, so EDCO has, uh, they've worked it out where EDCO is going to take over that service and, and we'll just contract, we'll have one contract with EDCO. Uh, as a part of that process, they had a right to raise the rates 15, 16, 4.6% or something. And they voluntarily said, we're going to freeze the rates. And that's, that saved the residents about $156,000 overall. That's true. <clears throat> Anywhere from 10 to $14 per resident um, for the trash, yearly for, for the trash collection. So they were very generous with, with that. I worked with Edco in the past, uh, and they're a very good company. And they provide, we've had excellent service with them in other parts of the city. They're, they're very ecologically minded in what they do, and uh, they provide great service. So they're taking over the UWS route, and that would yeah. be like the Portuguese bank community. The coastline, is it because the partly that was set up like that because of their trucks are too big? Did I hear something like why? Yeah, How well, that we, being uh, set up like that? We have, what's, we have steep driveways, and we have what's called backyard service. <clears throat> because some of the elderly people can't take their cans away down the driveway, down to the curbside. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we... We have backyard service and we have steep driveways. So they have to have smaller equipment. Mm -hmm. Some of the roads are narrower. Uh, they have to have specialized smaller equipment and be able to come back to the backyard and pull the trash cans down and collect them that way. So the EDCO is set up to do that. So they, so. they can provide, they're going to provide this exact same service to our residents that the Universal Waste had, but they're not going to raise the rates. Excellent. I think I heard during your council discussion, I mean, EDCO has been a great. Um, business partner for RPV too mm -hmm. that you don't really hear very, you don't hear anybody complaining about their service obviously. That's right. I know. I've been They've been very supportive of some of the local programs we've had too. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, something that we need everybody's support on in this community is water conservation mm -hmm. right now with the drought and everything with the restrictions and um, here we are. Our residents have received their water budgets from Cal Water and uh, now have to figure out how to reduce up to maybe 36%, depending on everybody's case is different. Mm -hmm. What about the city? How, what's going on with the city right now in terms of the city also has to conserve? That's right. Well, as you know, the, the city does not store or distribute water, uh, or not, not, does not uh, set water rates. We are a customer, just like anybody else, mm -hmm. with Cal Water. So, uh, but we do have a conservation plan. <clears throat> uh, we're going to reduce the park irrigation beyond the 20% ir reduction we did last year. And we're going to, but we're going to look at the critical sports areas, make sure those uh, lawn areas and so on are, are safely maintained. So we, we can't, we can't let that get into a situation where it's not safe for, for sports, youth sports. Uh, we're going to, we're going to be uh, continuing our community outreach. Uh, we have a, a con water conservation educational programs. Um, we have a special, if you go to the face page, the home page of um, our website, 
go to the bottom. There's a whole thing. It's called water conservation. Just click on it. There's a whole lot of <coughs> tips, information, links to other organizations like South Bay Energy Services Center that has water conservation programs, rebates, all kinds of things we have on there for, on the website. So we're going to continue to reach out to the community to make sure they have the information they need. And the council adopted a $65,000 allocation for replacing water uh, fixtures at the mm -hmm. various recreational facilities we have <coughs> and upgrade the uh, water control systems. And we're going to reduce the uh, plumbing fees for people who want to upgrade to, to uh, low flow type of water fixtures and so on. And we're going to do that. And we're going to waive the encroachment fee, which there, there's a... Um, there's a street, there's a curb, and there's a little strip of grass, and then there's a sidewalk. Well, that little strip of grass, uh, the residents uh, um, are supposed to maintain. Right. That's the way it works. Anyway, they, they, we're going to waive that encroachment fee for them to go in if they want to put a zeroscape and take that lawn out and put zeroscape in that little section there. They can do that. There are certain things they need to check with the city. We prefer not to have prickly pear cactus and those kind of things there. <laughs> Okay. For, for public safety, but, but, but there's a lot of zeroscaping they can do there, um, and so that will save uh, quite a bit of money for, the, for maintain, maintenance of that for the, for the people that have to maintain that. And also along our medians, uh, we're going to replace, uh, we're going to be more active. I, I've been trying to do this for years before this whole water conservation thing is the, is the landscaping in the, in the central median should be drought tolerant. Uh, so we're going to even look at zeroscape type of things, mm -hmm. which, which don't take any uh, additional water. So we're going to continue to go along those, those lines and replace those central meeting areas um, with either drought tolerant or zero scape plants. I remember when we were talking one time about this issue, about the fact that they take the preserve, we don't put one drop of water into that. I mean, that to me is just, if we could all have our yard set up like that. I know. I, I think I told a, you I had a fun interview from the New York Times uh, when they were asking us in the... How said, we were dealing with the drought restrictions. We have 1,400 acres of uh, parkland of which we don't use any water. And we just there was silence on the other end of the phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, it's been it's been tough for everyone to have to try to manage this. But I like even I went to Cal Water. We have a story that's going to run in our news program about the fact that they don't want to be considered the bad guys. That they're also going to be will have to have be fined if they mm -hmm. don't comply with how much water they need to reduce by as well. Mm -hmm. But that everybody everyone's case is individual, so that you can make an appeal. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I was I qualify for an appeal because we have low water use in my home, and you said you've you've put mm -hmm. an appeal in. Mm -hmm. So for people with larger lots in the city, you wrote a letter as, as Rolling Hills did to the PUC mm -hmm. concerned about the restrictions and you said you haven't heard back yet. They haven't heard back yet, no, but, it, but it, we, we were doing what we could to represent the residents here and, and explain that we have fire hazard issues, we have larger than normal lots and some of those lots have to have uh, maintain a certain amount of vegetation for fire uh, uh, buffer and so we put in uh, a letter uh, uh, you know, in, on behalf of our residents to try and see if they can come up with a formula that works for us, you know, with our particular situation. Mm -hmm. But you know what, just got to do your part and uh, take a shorter shower. But really it's about outdoor water use too. That's really where the bulk that's, of our water use is being I think targeted. that's the biggest thing for her. I, I think if you took uh, a, an average home up here in the same square footage and compared it to an average home in Torrance or someplace else, same square footage, you probably wouldn't find a whole lot of difference. It is that we have larger lots. Uh, and we are in a fire hazard area, so we have to maintain a certain amount of... Uh, of, of um, defensible space. Defensible space, that's a good way to put it, yeah. Right. And, and again, when I was talking to Cal Waters uh, spokespeople, I said, you know, I, they said obviously fire and safety, ha ha you know, safety comes first. So again, that's when you'd make your appeal if you're concerned about that. You're not going to be able to meet that requirement. Yes. Well, uh, if you go to the Cal Water site, you can enter your bill number, which is on your bill, and I think your zip code, and they'll come up with your water budget. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, and they'll give you the full year out, and you'll see month by month, they've taken 2013, reduced that by 36%, uh, and that's your budget. And then uh, you can see uh, uh, where you need to target for, for, for that particular budget. And then they give you a figure, if you're over the budget, um, I think it's $10 per CCF over that or something. Mm -hmm. So if you're 10 CCF over, it would be $100 additional you pay, something of that nature. Anyway, you go on the site, 
You can not only see a water budget, but there's a place on there to file appeal if you have a particular circumstance you feel is uh, should be they should be taking a look at. And again, take advantage of all the programs. There's a lot of yeah. conservation programs. Mm -hmm. You can do the turf removal programs and mm -hmm. uh, for dr replacing with drought resistant, get some dollars to help with your relandscaping mm -hmm. and you know like get these. They, they have all kinds of products you can get at Cal Water to help reduce mm -hmm. your use. So. That's right. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of. And just hope for El Nino. <laughs> Whether he's saying right, <laughs> we might get a lot of rain soon. But you got to get that mindset too. You gotta to fix the storm drains first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we it's have, like it's like this. You know, yeah. which way do you go? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Anything you want to add on that topic? I know you've also spent a lot of time on this one, and the, the with, with the water, water issue and anything else yeah. you want the residents to be aware. Well, of? just make sure you check our website because it's 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 like I say, you go on the home page there at the bottom. You'll see a, a, a strip of, of things you can click on, and one of them says water conservation. There's a lot of links there to all kinds of programs, water saving tips, and so on. And so that's probably your best source right at this point. You know. mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to transition on to uh, the next topic. And um, it's also making a lot of headlines. And I know the conversation is going to be quick because you can't say much, but Green Hills. Um, there's you know issues over there with the mausoleum that we've been hearing about for a while. And every meeting at public comments, we're seeing a lot of residents coming up their Lameda residents that are, you know, have issues with what's happened with the mausoleum built and how it's affecting their uh, views and everything else. And at this point, um, the council isn't responding because it's a legal matter. So just mm -hmm. for residents that are watching these meetings, kind of give us just an update of what you can. Yeah, well, it, you're right. Um, it's not that the council isn't concerned. It isn't that the council wants to find the best possible solution to this. Uh, we do. Uh, but it's, there's some legal matters there that we can't be um, discussing this in public right at this point in, in any great detail. Um, uh, we do have a meeting scheduled September 1st to hear the appeal um, um, on this, so uh, there'll be a great opportunity there to, to have a dialogue on that at that point. But as of now, uh, there's a lot of legal things going on in the background that um, make it complex for us to be making comments. But, but rest assured, we do want to find the best possible solution to this as possible. Right. I think one council member said it's going to be difficult for it to be win-win, but at least you can We're do the best do the you can best with what can. you got. We're going to do the best we can. All right. So stay tuned, and that will be in September that that will mm -hmm. come up at, at mm -hmm. your meeting. Right. Um, what do you see as some of the big issues that the council is going to be tackling over the summer months, and just what, what's coming up? Well, I, I'd say one thing we want to make sure we give the residents the opportunity for is um, we, the storm drain user fee expires in 2016. And I want to make sure, and, and all the council members and the staff and city wants to make sure that the residents have an opportunity to decide whether or not they want to continue that uh, down the road. And in order to do that, we have to make a lot of preparations to get this on a ballot and get it out there and get it, get it to the residents. Um, it'll be a ballot uh, thing if it, uh, if it goes forward. It'll be in, I think, spring 2016 would, would be when the ballot measures would go out. <clears throat> and I just want to make sure that everybody has all the information they need to make an intelligent decision. And um, at, my personal opinion is it's a great program. We, we really need it. Um, um, I've explained to you how what happens to the CMP pipe and how right. it yeah. can be very dangerous. But uh, again, this is a decision that it's up to the residents to decide whether to go forth or not. Okay, well that's a very serious subject that we all have to pay attention to. So we're going to move on to summer projects that are funner. <laughs> um, that would be uh, the Pass the Fun Test because it's summertime and school's out for summer. And that is 4th of July is coming up. That is right. big for the city, the biggest party the city throws pretty yeah. much on 4th mm -hmm. of July. You're looking forward to that. I'm always oh, in Boston, so I miss it. Oh, you miss it. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's great. We, we have all kinds of activities there planned for the kids and the entertainment there that comes uh, every year and uh, all kinds of booze and things to do there. And uh, it's just a, just a fun day, a really fun day for the city there at the City Hall site. And I understand that day you eat a lot of pie. <laughs> Is there a pie-eating contest? Well, I think they, uh, they use a pie-eating contest there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's okay, right. Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, enjoy. That will be yeah. fun. Um, other things happening this summer. Um, pretty exciting. I see that the uh, YMCA is partnered up with mm -hmm. the city and is offering summer camp at Ladera Linda. This is new? Yeah, yeah, Ladera Linda. Uh, let's see, it's June 8th through August 14th, uh, ages 6 through 13. And they have all these summer camps, and they are all different kind of camps you can join up with. Uh, they have science, they have nature, they have all kinds of things that you can do. And I'm a member of the San Pedro Peninsula, why they're doing it. They're fantastic, mm -hmm. what they do. No, no, it's so great. It's they be have good great program. programs. And so, again, uh, it, to, to find out about it, you just go to the city's website, and uh, you can search uh, YMCA Summer Camp. Or right, something. It'll come and right up. through Wrecking Parks. There's all kinds 
kinds of things you can, right. sign, you can always right. sign up for this summer. Um, anything going else this summer that you want to highlight? Or? No, I, I just want to wish everybody a happy summer. You're not going to tell us about where you go hang out on the beach? <laughs> <laughs> so residents come talk to you about issues? Uh, no, I, no, I've, I've got I think you have plans. a secret spot you said somewhere in Abalone Cove you're yeah, not going to well, share. That's, 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 my, that's my secret spot. But I just want everybody to have a happy and safe summer yeah. uh, this, this summer. And Excellent. Just be aware if there's currents out there in the ocean, you're out there swimming, just be aware uh, what, you're, what where you are and if, if there's any warning to, to heed those warnings. But other than that, just have a great and happy summer. And I also want to say a uh, big congratulations to you. You were voted as first vice president of South Bay Cog. Yes, that's coming that's, up this next meeting. That, yeah, so that's they'll right. be a uh -huh. and that's pretty that's pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah that's that's, <laughs> that's uh, more work for you maybe. Well, uh, no, because I'm pretty pretty involved with the Cog because that's an organization that um, we can, as a city, have a, a certain amount of clout with regional issues, and even with the legislation in Sacramento, we have a clout a voice there that can direct things to keep our local control more, you know, with us locally. So it has a lot of important issues that it deals with. It's also the South Bay Energy Services Center is an arm of that as well. And then the city has saved hundreds of thousands of dollars, and I've been pushing for years to get energy savings uh, programs for the city um, um, that the South Bay Energy Services Center has provided for us. So, um, so How many communities are in the COG then there? Um, the one, is there quite a few? I'm so South how Bay. Total forty odd cities. Wow. No, not forty. Um, it's it's mostly it kind of goes from uh, Rancho Palos Verdes, goes up through Carson, and I think El Segundo is a dividing line. Then there's what something called the West LA Cog that's from El Segundo North. So it's kind of up in that central corridor off the 110 freeway. We'll I, can't, I can't remember exactly how many cities there are. We'll have to follow you to the meeting. <laughs> okay. One of these days. Right. Meantime, we'll follow you down to the beach this summer. <laughs> you got it. Well, thanks for all you're doing for the city, as always. As always and uh, we'll see you at the next council meeting. My pleasure. All right. That'll do it for this edition of RPV City Talk here with Mayor Jim Knight. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.